different plants, things that are hanging in the air, but FAR have come up with a, with a reporting system. FAR ran a funded project from MPI, um, cost of production, and we collected paddock records and collected them, collated them, summarised them all up to benchmark, that was fine, the average of the costs, the gross margin, was the end result. And it took a long time to do this, and we only had one or two paddocks from each person, each farmer, and there was about 50 farmers. So I was given the job to find something simpler and automated, and I came across production-wise that had been developed in Australia by grain growers, and they were doing it for the same reason. They've got farmer members, and they wanted to help them record, and in the background it collates the benchmarking. So there was something that we wanted straight away. So you've adapted it for New Zealand? FAR adapted it and I worked with um, farmers. We did small trainings to begin with for probably 18 months. I went around the country finding what the farmer wanted. Would this work for them? Was it going to help? And the, obviously farming in New Zealand is quite complex. You've got several crops in a paddock, the seed crops, and the system has had to be able to cope with that. First of all, you've got to do a farm map, but that's a lot easier than it would appear. Yep, it's based on a very simple system, but it starts in the map. You register, and it homes in with your postcode to where your farm is. And a couple of clicks with the mouse, with Google Earth image, and you can build up your paddocks. But you need that for such things as farm safety anyway, don't you? Yep. And now with the farm environment plans, there's a, s a separate layer in the map where you can click in and mark out all your features. So your irrigation, your water channels, if you've got shelter belts or particular dry land area, or if you're near rivers. So you can build up the map to do your features and then print this off for the farm environment plan. And it all comes up with little multi-choices? Yep, multi-choice of whatever you want, yep. And for the data entry, there's multi-choice of inputs um, and operations, you can add all those in. It sounds very simple, but is it really that simple? Can people just pick up on it? Yep, well we offer training to help them get going and obviously there's a phone line to FAR as well and I've got um, a Lincoln University student who helps farmers, she goes out and visits them and helps them set up um, because that's the initial thing is the setup. Once you've got that with the map, you can then go and do your paddock data entry and basically you're recording from when you plough the paddock or cultivate it through sowing, putting fertiliser and sprays on, right through to harvesting. And then that links with the grain storage section. And I guess this is all part of the modern accountability. I'm afraid so. When we first started it, it was all about the benchmarking. But in the last six to 12 months, the whole compliance thing has been extremely difficult for farmers. So we have thought, how can this program help them? You know, we've got to help farmers get through this and the reporting is really good. They can report to satisfy any audit for anything. And we have a vendor declaration, which is a traceability report that can be given to the end user for the seeds that go to the Northern Hemisphere or for grain that goes into the food chain. So with this situation, you can basically recall whatever happens to whatever paddock. Yes, any activity that happens to that paddock during the whole growing season, you can add. Yeah, the grazing, it wants to know the time the animals go in, what type of animal it is. Basically, that's only capturing that movement onto the, onto the paddock and how many there were. It's not capturing any stock records. Gross margins, do you have a look at that? Can you work out how you're doing? Well, the system does it for you because the activity is linked with a price. FAR have put in the background default prices for all the inputs, whether it's sprays, fertiliser and actually the machinery operations. So farmer doesn't really need to think about pricing as he's doing it. They're already built in and then he can change them if he wants to and it remembers it all the way through. But at the end of his season, there is a whole reporting thing called gross margin where he can pull off exactly what that paddock or that crop or the whole of his farm has made him. So that's income, his gross income, whether it's grain harvest, 
forage harvest or grazings and less his operations and inputs gives him the gross margin and his cost of production. Irrigation, do you, do you sort of build that in as one of the costs? Irrigation is a cost, although we have found some farmers have forgotten about it and with the benchmarking they have obviously gone into the dryland farmer. So irrigation is a cost and it can be reported there. There's also a simple reminder now, when they do a grain harvest, there's a tick box. Did you irrigate? So it makes them remember that actually they, there is a cost to irrigation and that will also go on to their gross margin. A lot of people carry cell phones and they've got apps. Can you tie your cell phone into this system? No, if you set the, the system up in the beginning with your map, with your home um, computer, and then if you've got an iPhone or Android, you can download the mobile app and you just put in production-wise, lowercase. The app's free and then all the information will be automatically uploaded onto that app because it's in the cloud and you can go and do data entry on the go. And that's what the app's for. It's so that the farmer can do all this in real time because why would he want to come home and sit in front of a computer? The farmers in New Zealand have so much to do, they need to be able to do this as they're doing it on the go. Contractors, employees, do they sort of get involved? How, how do you bring them in? Yes, if, if the farmer wants to, to let the employee use an app, that's, that's up to them, although they will um, see, obviously, his, his costs and things. But the easiest thing to do is to do the farmer to do an activity in advance, which means it's a planned operation, and then he can print that off with a map and give that to the contractor and say, this is what I'd like you to do this next week and then the farmer can then go back into his diary page and approve it or deny it if that job has actually been successful. Finally, this isn't an option, is it? I mean, it's compulsory for the recording. Unfortunately, record keeping is not going to go away and it's to tick the boxes for um, traceability into the food chain and compliance. And we're obviously going to keep up to speed with production wise to help the farmer and enable him to be able to tick all those boxes purely from him just doing his data entry. So there's lots that goes on in the background that um, he probably doesn't even know about. And he's also got the um, advisor app, which is the same as his, but if he's got a farm advisor, that advisor can again assist him doing some of the recommendations for him um, viewing the farms, this is all assistance to the farmer. So really, po police work ends up as a huge asset for the farmer's own business? Yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's work that will help him, you know, pass all the compliance. <laughs> <laughs>